This video was an excerpt from our new managed learning package for Revit. This course contains an ebook PDF, video tutorials, a template and more content to help you master Revit. Learn more at revitpure.com manage or check the link in the video description. What is Dynamo? Dynamo is a visual programming software made by Autodesk. It allows you to automate tasks that you would normally do manually in Revit. Instead of programming using text, you use what is called nodes and wires. In the end, the result can be the same as building a custom add-in. In this example, you can see two different ways of doing the same thing. You can see both the visual and textual programming. Both these scripts accomplish the same result. There are multiple things you can accomplish with Dynamo. In this video, we will focus on modifying parameters and information. Dynamo can be used to generate geometry, but these features are usually more complex. Dynamo terminology. Let's learn the common tools you have with Dynamo. This is a node. This is a wire. This is the name of the node. This is an input port. And this is an output port. Dynamo works by connecting multiple nodes together. You have to click on the output port of a node, then on the input port of another. These nodes are now sharing information. Renaming nodes. Double click on a node to rename it. Rename nodes will have a yellow rename tag alongside their name. Nodes library. On the left of the interface, you will see the node library. It is divided in multiple categories. The nodes that interact with Revit are part of the Revit category. The search bar is essential to find your way around the huge number of nodes. You can also right click to access the search bar. Custom community packages. A strength of Dynamo is the active community which keeps providing additional nodes for free. Go to the package menu and select search for a package. You will see multiple packages. You can click on sort by then on downloads to see the most popular packages. Some packages are essential for a great Dynamo experience. More on that later. Input nodes. In this example, you can see most of the available input nodes. They are essential to get your script started. This is where users can define specific numbers, text, file path, yes, no, and much more. Create a note. Some scripts can become quite complicated. Adding notes to the script helps other users understand what's going on. Go to Edit and click on Create Note. Enter a description that can help other users. Creating a group. On very large scripts, keeping track of the process can be challenging. A good workflow is to create groups. Select multiple nodes and notes. Right click and select Create Group. You can show a group color by clicking on it. Multiple colors will be available. When creating big scripts, use a strong color code to keep things easy to manage. Manual mode versus automatic mode. The automatic manual option is located at the bottom left of your screen. Automatic mode will run and rerun the script each time you modify it. This is the default mode in Dynamo, but probably not convenient for you. Automatic mode often executes scripts before users are ready to do so. It can potentially cause problems to your models if you are not careful. Instead of automatic, switch to manual instead. When you want to activate the script, click on Run. Regardless of which mode you are using, create a test model before using your script on an important Revit model. Creating a sequence. Time to create a simple script. Use the right click and search for a sequence node. If you hover your cursor above the node, you will get a description of what kind of input is expected. Adding a code block. One of the most common nodes is called code block. Simply double click to create one. This can be used for multiple kinds of inputs. In this example, we enter different number of values, each separated by a semicolon. Create wires to link the outputs with the inputs. Click on the run button. The sequence should be created. Hover your cursor above the bottom right of the sequence node. You should see a list of numbers. Click on the pin icon to keep seeing these numbers. Using numbers and integers. Code block can be useful 
that they cannot be used as inputs inside the Dynamo player. Therefore, it's probably best to use other input nodes. In this example, we create both a number node and an integer slider. An integer is a number that is not a fraction. Using a slider, if you click on the arrow of the slider node, you will see other numbers. You can set a minimum, a maximum, and a step value for this slider. When you are done, connect the nodes together. You can still use the code block for a value that is not going to be changed, such as the step. Executing the sequence. Click on the round button. Again, you should be seeing the list of numbers based on the inputs you have entered. Using a string. It is possible to use a string instead of a number in the sequence. In this example, we create a string node and type in A. You can see the resulting sequence, which will create 13 letters in alphabetical order. 13 steps to create your first Dynamo script. Step number one, understand the difference between category, family, type, and instance. It is probably a concept you are familiar with, but it is crucial you master the difference between the different levels of elements in Revit, else you will get confused with nodes. Step number two, define all elements of a category. Let's say you want to pick all doors in your project. You'll need to bring two nodes, categories and all elements of categories. Use the search bar to find the nodes. In the categories node, use the drop down menu to pick a category. In this example, we use doors. If you try to run the script, you will see a list of all doors in your project. Something that you should be careful about. If you try to type in doors in a string node and run the script, the node will turn yellow, which means it has a warning. In this case, the warning is because the node expected to have an input category, but he gave a string instead. Figuring out which input to use confuses a lot of beginners. Step number three. Add element set parameter by name node. Search for the element set parameter by name node. Set the doors to the element input port. Use a string value for the parameter name and a number for the value. For the sake of this exercise, we will use the cell height parameter to modify doors. When your script is ready, click on run if you are in manual mode. Check out your doors. The sill height should be adjusted to 150 mm. Step number four, switch to select model elements node. In this case, we've used the all elements of category, but what if you want a specific selection of elements instead? Bring in the select model elements node. Be careful, there's another node called select model element without an S. This node only allows you to select a single element. When you click on select, go back to Revit and do a window selection. Step number five, understand element ID. When elements are selected, you will see a bunch of numbers populate the node. These represent the element ID value, which is a unique number for each element. Click on the green element ID to show the element in your Revit model. Step number six, create a selection filter. Try to select elements once again, but this time, select a lot of them. If you run the script, you will see a warning. That's because you selected elements from multiple categories, not just doors. Other categories don't have a cell height parameter, resulting in a dynamo warning. The script is still working, but it is inefficient. This is not a good practice. You need to clean your script. To filter the selection, you'll need to bring in a few nodes. The first is called element get category. This node will list the category of each selected element. Plug it on the select elements node. Then bring a node called category name. This node converts the input type from category to a string, which is required for the next steps. Then bring in a node that simply has two equal symbol. In the X input of the node, put in the category name. In the Y input, put in a string that has the category you are looking for, in this case, doors. 
If you test the script, you can see the equal node will return a true or false value, depending on if the element of the list is a door or not. Now create a node called list filter by bool mask. In the top input, bring back your original model element selection. On the mask input, bring in the result from the equal node. If you hover your cursor above the node, you can see the result. The node creates two lists, one that contains all the doors and one that contains all elements that are not doors. To preserve only the doors, use the in output port. Plug it into the element set parameter by name node. If you run the script, you can see that you don't have a warning anymore. Step number seven, alternative. Use node from rhythm package. To filter elements, we had to use a lot of nodes. It is possible to accomplish the same thing, but with a single node instead. You will need to download a package called Rhythm, made by John Pearson. Go to the package menu and download the Rhythm package. Use a node called Element Filter by Category. You can know this node is from the Rhythm package because of the metronome icon next to the node. Remove all the nodes we used to filter in the previous steps. There are three inputs you need to fill out. One with the name of the category and one with the condition. In this case, we'll use the equals value. If you run the script, you can see that once again, the seal height of the doors have been modified. Step number eight, replace set parameter by name node. The set parameter by name node we've used previously is limited to instance properties. The rhythm package contains another helpful node called element set parameter by name type or instance that also works with type parameters. Replace the old node with this custom node. Step number nine, prepare the script for the Dynamo player. Let's prepare our script to be used inside of the Dynamo player which is an interface that allows users to use Dynamo scripts without having to open Dynamo. The first thing you need to do is to right click on the input nodes you want to be able to customize and click on is input. Then you can rename the input nodes so users know what kind of value they need to enter. Step number 10, bring the script to the Dynamo player. Save the script. Open the Dynamo Player located in the Manage tab. You will see the Dynamo Player interface with a bunch of default scripts. Click on the folder icon with an arrow. A Windows folder will appear. Paste your new script and click the circle refresh arrow. You should see your script appear on the list. Step number 11. Test your script. When using the Dynamo Player, don't click on the play button. Click on the properties icon to modify the input. You should be seeing all the inputs you have set in Dynamo. First, create a new selection. Then, modify the other input values. Instead of cell height, we will use height instead and put in a different value. Let's try changing the width of the doors to 800 millimeters. You can see the result in Revit. Step number 12, add a string parameter option. In the script we've just created, you are limited to using parameters that have a number value. What if you want to modify a parameter that uses a text value? That's when you can add an option to use a string input. Go back to your script, add a node called if. Plug in the number value node into the false input. Rename this node to number value. Then create a new string node and call it text value. Plug it into the true input. Finally, create a node called Boolean. Boolean means that you can alternate between true and false. Change the name of the node to indicate the result to users. Plug in the node to the test input. Plug the result of the if node to the value of the set parameter node. Save your script and refresh the Dynamo player. If you modify the parameters of the script again, you will see brand new inputs. 
However, the boolean input seems to be missing. Go back to the script and make sure it is an input. The true or false node should now appear. In this example, I want to modify the comments parameter of the walls. You need to activate the boolean node to true for it to work properly. Click on the play button. If you have a look at one of the walls, you can see that the comment says what you've entered in the Dynamo player. Step number 13, add parameter filtering. Let's add another layer of customization by creating further filtering. In this case, all the elements from a selected category were affected by the script. Now we'll, now we'll add a condition based on the value of the comments parameter. We will modify the comments value of a few walls to RP. Let's modify the comments value of a few walls to RP. Go back to the script. Add another node from the rhythm package called filter by parameter string value. Plug in the elements. We will use the comments parameter as the filter. The value required to be included in the list is RP. Use equals as the filtering condition. The comments fields of all walls that currently have RP will turn into Ninja 2000. Click on Run. Have a look at some of the walls. Those of them who previously had RP at the comments parameter now have Ninja 2000 instead. Unlock the rest of our Dynamo tutorial by going to revitpure.com manage. Become a great BIM manager with our Manage Learning Package for Revit.